Heavenly Father, as we come together this morning, we do thank you for all that you've done. We thank you, Father, for your blessings being upon us, for watching over us and keeping us. Father, we pray that we'll continue to look toward you for our leadership, our guidance, and that, Father, we know that we can always depend on you. Pray, Father, for each one that is here this morning. May hearts be open to receive your word. May, Father, we grow each day more and more. Pray for those that aren't with us this morning, whatever the reason. We know some were. Some have other things that they have to do. But bless them. Let them know that they are in our prayers. Be with our pastor as he brings the word this morning. Be of one that you put upon his heart. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us. In a way of announcements, just a few things on the bottom of your morning worship and also just a few things uh, that is not there as well. Uh, Labor Day, of course, is not this coming Monday, but the following Monday on the, on the 7th of uh, September. Uh, that's the first Monday in September. That will be Labor Day. And then, of course, uh, the school in St. Tammany Parish begins hopefully September the 8th with a schedule there and then uh, on the 14th of, uh, of September all of them go to school all together so you see the alphabet is forth with all of that. Uh, Sunday school and uh, men's uh, Wednesday night Bible study um, we'll not, uh, we will not have until further notice for a while so be aware of that. Um, as long as there's nothing else that will come up this week, this coming Wednesday uh, at 6.30, the women will have their Wednesday night Bible study in the kitchen area. So all the women, you're included, you can come for that or you can go online. What do you use again? Messenger. Messenger. So you can go online for Messenger, ladies, uh, if you would like to. So that's this coming Wednesday, hopefully, if everything works out okay as far as with all that. Um, next Sunday, we will begin collecting for Georgia Barnett. We do this every September. Uh, now, Georgia Barnett is mission work being done in Louisiana, even though it says Georgia Barnett is behind the lady. But just know that we will collect for that, and I'll put those in there as well. Um, in the foyer, there are a few of the... Uh, what I've done is I have... Um, ordered some Sunday school books for adults or you used or whatever um, for the upcoming September, October, and November. This is the Sunday school literature. Now it's not the, the big print, it's just a regular print, but it's the Sunday school literature that we normally would have if, if the adults had Sunday school uh, say in September, October, November. So this is for the next three months. So if you'd like to take one home, you can do so there in the foyer. I notice some people have, so if you'd like to take one home, you can. If you have any questions on it, you can do it yourself every week uh, concerning it and it'll give you a schedule as far well as, you know, like almost doing your own Sunday school on your own. If you have any questions, you can either text me, call me, or maybe even text or call Al and ask him or uh, somebody else, maybe Johnny or anybody else, if you have any questions uh, concerning after what you read, if you have any difficulty on it, but it's out there. Um, there's one uh, large print open window in the back if you would like, if anybody would like that. I had about three or four of those in the foyer, and I know some people did take that. That's, that's devotions for uh, September, October, and November. Uh, it's devotional uh, every morning. So if you would like one of those, there's, there's one there. And if, it, and if that one is gone, if anybody else needs or would like to have one, just let me know and I can always order some more uh, large print open <coughs> windows. And then, but there's one back there, and again, this is the Sunday School material for September, October, and November. Um, October the 10th at 11 a.m. here at Bayou Baptist Church, we will have a memorial service 
for Milton Deal. Is that right, Sandy? Yes. Yes. So Sandy would like to. So for any who would like to come on that day, if you uh, if you want to come, that's fine. That will be October the 10th at 11 o'clock, and we'll put that in the bulletin as well. I've already discussed some of these things with Johnny this morning uh, concerning this. You can put it in the bulletin. But anyhow, uh, October the 10th at 11 o'clock here, we'll have a memorial service for Milton Deal. Um, I feel like it's probably a good time to when people can come together and we will do that. Um, if you would like to give for the relief efforts being done uh, for Hurricane Laura in for the people who are up and around Lake Charles, Cameron Parish and different places like that, what you can do is if you want to, um, I can get you an envelope, or we'll get some envelopes and you can put either cash in the envelopes and mark on it, relief effort for Hurricane Laura, or you can make out a check to Bayou Baptist Church, and somewhere on the check just put relief effort for Laura, Hurricane Laura, and that way we will get it to the Louisiana Baptist Organization. I, I caution you, there are lots of scams out there concerning people who are not really helping with Laura, all it is is giving money for themselves. Do not do it. Even if they say we're from the Red Cross, we're from the Salvation Army, or we're from here, or we're from there, you don't know because these people are calling you. So you have no idea who they are. So if you want to, this is to me the best way to do it is you make out a check to buy your Baptist church, put it on there, and we will make sure that that money, 100% of it, goes to the relief effort for Hurricane Laura through the Louisiana Baptist organization who are out going out that way uh, and who are doing that. Uh, even we as a church will also, we have to talk about that as well, we will be giving also for the help relief for Hurricane Laura uh, and for the efforts that's being done. And we will do it also through the Louisiana Baptist uh, organization or call association because we know that they are doing the work and it is going out there through that uh, and that's what I can tell you unless you know somebody else personally that you know for a fact that it is going out and helping the, the people or helping with the relief of hurricane water be careful please there are, there are a lot of scams out there and, and people are uh, you know so because you, know, you really don't know what is legit and what's not. So, um, so just be careful. This past weekend, I think the 29th, was our 15 years since Hurricane Katrina. That we, and, and I, don't know, I looked at the paper today, and there are still places, uh, not only in New Orleans, where still people have never come back. People have not come back, and people have not done anything, even after 15 years. Hurricane Katrina out there, so so just be aware of that, uh, of all these things. So I know there's a lot going on, a lot taking place. Anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else going on or taking place, or any, anything else? Like I said, I know there's a lot, so at the end of the service, if you want to discuss anything, just let me know and we can go from there as well. If not, <clears throat> Mr. Al will come and lead us in another hymn, 455. I must tell Jesus.
back of our bulletins, and in your bulletins are written a few prayers and requests and concerns I'd ask you to remember and to pray for the different ones we have continually on our prayer list, especially the many, many, many people that have been affected by this Hurricane Laura over southeast of us, over Lake Charles, Texas, Cameron Parish, um, all along there and going up north as well. Uh, it's, it's very devastating what has taken place. Uh, but I'd ask you to pray for the many people that have been affected and that are affected by it. And also pray for those who are already there and there many people that will be going there to help with the efforts to rebuild and to help the many people uh, that have been affected by Hurricane Laura. So pray for all the efforts and all that is going on with that. Now, aside from all of that, let us continue to pray for the many people that are affected or are dealing with the COVID-19 as well. Even through all of this, all of this is going on. Sure, the numbers are, are going down steadily, and many people are doing many things, but people are still getting um, the COVID virus. So we want to pray for the many people that are dealing with it, the family, friends, and everyone else and the many workers and the many people that are on the front line as well. Um, Ms. Nicole Porter, we want to continue to remember Ms. Nicole. She is back in the hospital. Is that right? Yeah, she's back in the hospital and getting treatments. Um, she still has leukemia and so they're giving her some treatments and now she's going to be getting treatments and then be isolated for a while as well. So just yeah, pray. She might get out as soon as maybe Monday or Tuesday, but then she has to be isolated at home for three weeks. Nobody can't be around her. Okay, because of the immune system. Yeah, immune yeah. system will yeah. be just not there at all. Okay. Yeah. So so pray for pray for Nicole and, and the family and what all they dealing with with her treatments for her cancer. Of course, Johnny Garrett Jr. Continue to remember him with his treatments and ongoing battle with his cancer. Pray for him. Uh, Ms. Candace Biggs, continue to remember Ms. Candace in prayer and what she too is dealing with with her cancer. And then also we remember uh, Janet's uh, son-in-law, Ben, as he continues to deal with his health issues and what he's dealing with as well, so do remember him. Uh, prayers of Thanksgiving, um, Tinker had surgery on her her arm as you can see on her hand at a carpal tunnel and they did that so pray for her for healing and for help as she's a little pain and also Janet she had one cat one cataract removed right she had one cataract removed so remember her for her healing with her ongoing with that as for she she's uh, dealing with that and probably what they're gonna do another one in a couple of weeks the ninth the ninth yes so pray for her as she uh, we'll be dealing with that, so remember her in prayer. Uh, again, on our prayer list, just continue to remember different people, Bobby and Irene Rodriguez, continue to remember them, of course, Miss Virginia Hall, in the Lacombe Nursing Home, as well as all of the people in the nursing homes. Pray for all of them. Um, do continue to pray for Mr. Billy Lynch's family. Oh, it's back in the hospital first. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Home now. She's home now. Okay, good. So we remember Barbara in prayer as she's still dealing with her health and what she's dealing with and of course her husband Lawrence as well. So remember both of them and also um, his, his sister is Ruby. Uh, yeah, Ruby. Ruby's going out there. They did that something. Amazing. So just, just continue to remember Miss Ruby in prayer, his sister, and she's on hospice, and but doing okay so far. And then Harvey up in Kentucky, so remember Harvey in prayer and what he deals with. He's, he's got ongoing health issues and battles uh, himself as well with, with all of that. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us. Tinka. I have a prayer of Thanksgiving. Okay. Yesterday, I had to go grocery shopping. Okay. And Janet brought me and dropped me off. Okay. And I was in one of those electronic carts, my hand in the sling, sure. my oxygen in the car. Okay. And I'm tootling along, and I'm trying to get a, a big package of pork chops. 
into the buggy and with one hand, and it's really heavy and I can't get it. This lady walks up and she says, let me get that for you. So she puts it in my buggy. Right. As I go around the store, it took me three hours. <laughs> As I went around the store. Hey, pretty good. My wife, she goes to the store three hours. She had to get a yeah, buggy. Yeah, 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 don't run that slow. It was an operator on the day there. Anyway. As I'm going around the store, I had at least five or six different people, both men and women, yeah. come up to me and say, oh, let me get that for you. They'd get something that was a little bit out of my reach, or they'd come up and they'd say, is there anything I can do to help you? I felt so blessed right. by this many Good. people yeah. offering to help me. And then when I got to the checkout, the checkout people were also really helpful. The, the girl bagged up all my groceries and she put them in a regular buggy. Yeah. And she said, I'm going to wheel them out for you. Okay. So she wheeled it out where I could go sit and wait for Janet to come right, back yeah. and pick me up. Right. I mean, and I was a cash saver, so y'all need to frequent that store. The people there are really, really nice. I, I, I just felt so blessed by all the aid that was offered to me. I even put it on Facebook last night because I just, I just you know, everybody talks about, well, nobody cares anymore, but it's not true. There are real caring people. Out so this was at Cash Saver? At Cash Saver on Pontchartrain. On Pontchartrain. Okay, I know it's over there. Okay. Well, good. Fair thanks. Great. Other prayer requests. That's good. Any others? Ginger. Just continue prayer for Frank, my family. Okay. Morris, me, my husband, myself. Yes. Also, I talked to Margie yesterday. She's doing well, but Jim had cataract surgery done, too, in one eye, and I think schedule to do the other. I don't know exactly. Okay. But uh, remember that in prayer. She, she sounded good. She said she was feeling good. Right. Okay. And um, to give you know, everybody, say hello to everybody. Okay. She always asks about you and Debbie. Yeah. And, uh, we talk about how young y'all young look and how terrible that is because it shouldn't be. Is there somebody, <laughs> somebody else up here? <laughs> but anyway. Thank you. Talk about <laughs> And continue to remember Barbara. I want everybody to just pray for Barbara really hard. I don't know Glenn him personally yet. Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, here we have two Barbara, so we got to make sure we know which one. But we're going to pray for both Barbara because right. both of them have health issues. Yeah, Glenda's, 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 Glenda's Barbara. But, but Glenda's friend Barbara. Yes. Okay. Sure will. Absolutely appreciate that. Um, but but don't worry about it. Is it okay if I say anything, Gabby? Debbie's going to be having, she's got to go to Dr. Slaco and she's probably going to have to have cataract surgery. She's got the best doctor to do it. Yeah, so you see, we're not young, you see. <laughs> but yeah, she's, she, she's having trouble with, already with one eye already, as far as with all of that. So remember her in prayer with that and also her sinuses as well. And my ear. Well, that's it, uh, signs of ear, whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah she had to go. Yeah, she went to Dr. Foster, I mean, Dr. Pena and Foster, both of them, huh? Just Dr. Pena. Dr. Pena, okay. Well, you just talked to Dr. Foster, right? Yeah. I thought you said you talked to him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got him mixed up. Anyhow, so, so remember her in prayer as well. Yeah? Uh, I want to remind everybody to pray for our government. Yes, absolutely, yes. Our government and upcoming election. Yes, right. Yes, we have quite a few things going on. And pray for all the people in places of authority and power. Appreciate that. Mayors, councilmen, presidents, uh, president of the uh, of St. Tammany Parish, uh, and all of them. Everybody that, that is there. So just pray for all who are in places of authority. Appreciate that. Yes. And pray for whomever you may be voting for. Pray also for all that is taking place with the social injustice that is taking place that is around the whole country. Just pray for the many people and what's going on with, with all of that. Pray, pray, pray for that, that that may get better um, with that because it affects a lot of people. And, and, and I really think that a lot of police officers and people in law enforcement, for a few bad apples, are getting, uh, are getting really a bad a name and it was only because of a few people. 
and I'm not saying it's not, it is happening, but it's only a few people in retrospect, but pray, pray for that because that affects all the people, everybody. I don't care if you are, whether you're white, Hispanic, Mexican, or, or, or African American, it doesn't matter, it affects all of us. And I and ask that you to pray for all that's going on with the social injustice and pray that the people may come to know the Lord so that way people will treat all people the same regardless of the color of their skin. And we need to pray for that because it is, a, it is an ongoing problem uh, that, has hap that has been going on for a very long time. And so pray for all the, for the many, many people that are affected by that. It's just sad to see um, such a division. Also understand that some of what's going on too is politics. So just, just wanted to let you know, it's, you know, some of it is politics, but there's a lot that's going on. There's some of it that's going on. It's not politics. It is politics as well. And so we just need to pray for all that is going on with the government and everything else as well. So pray for each other. And, uh, and, and we need to treat each other the same, regardless. It doesn't matter. Just do it. And so just pray for our country. It's causing strife and, and division and different things and shouldn't be there. We got enough going on without having to dealing with all of that as well, as far as in life. So just pray for all of that. On the prayer request, pray for each other. Remember each other in prayer during the course of the week. Uh, again, just pray for those who are going traveling back and forth to work or going someplace else. Uh, pray for the many, many people who are out of work, unemployed due to this COVID-19. Um, remember them in prayer. And as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be. And you may not even like that person. Pray for them. Pray that the Lord may change their life and their heart. Pray for them. And as always, as you've heard here, give thanks to the Lord for answered prayer. Even if he tells you, wait. And even if he tells you no, Give thanks. If it's no, it's for a reason that's for best for you. If it's to wait, it's the same thing. He knows what's best in our lives. So give thanks to the Lord. You know, again, I always mention Daniel. Three times a day while in captivity, he would open up his window and he would give thanks to the Lord. Morning, afternoon, and evening. And he was going through a lot. And I know some of you are going through a lot. Give thanks to the Lord. Allow Him to work in our lives and in our hearts as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, as we come now, Lord, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many things that are going on in all of our lives, Lord. But Lord, we especially lift up in prayer the people over in Cameron Parish, Lake Charles, and other areas that have been affected and inundated by Hurricane Laura this past weekend. We, we pray for the people, Lord, that are going through terrible, terrible time right now. We remember vividly, even though it's been 15 years since Katrina, we know what they're going through, and our heart goes out to all of them. And we ask for your help, for your grace, and your mercy. And for those that are helping them, Lord, to get them back, we pray for the many people that are there as well. Lord, we pray for our country. Our country is in a turmoil. There is chaos. There is social injustice. There are many things that are going on and taking place within our country, Lord. And we just ask for your help, for your grace, and your mercy. We pray for those in places of power and authority, whomever they may be, the president, the vice president, the senators, the Congress people, the mayors, the, and many other people that are in places of authority. We lift them all up and we pray for them, for your help and for your grace in their life. Lord, we lift up the many people here that are going through and dealing with different health issues. Many have been voiced, Lord, and we lift them all up. Johnny Garrett Jr. as he continues to battle his cancer. Candace Biggs as she has cancer. And also Nicole Porter 
and she is battling cancer. And then others that are battling other things as well, we lift them up, Lord. And we pray for the many people, Lord, that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. And we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for being with us, for watching over us, and for helping us. We pray for the many, many people in the nursing homes and in hospitals. The many people that are affected by this COVID-19. Whomever they may be, we pray for them and ask that you watch over them. Traveling mercies for the many who are traveling and will be traveling. Be with them. And Lord, we especially pray, we lift up the many, many people who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be. We pray for the souls of so many in need of Jesus Christ. Be with us, Lord. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us stand as Al comes now and leads us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 59. My Lord is near me all the time.
Word of God, let me try to share another song with you. One that may be familiar to some, but it's been one, but it's Christ Receive It, Sinful Men. Sinners Jesus will receive soundest word of grace to all. Oh, the heavenly path we leave, all who linger, all who fall, sing it all and over again. Christ receive his sinful man, make the message clear and plain. Christ receive his sinful man, come and give you rest. Trust him for his word is plain. He will take the sinful less. Christ receive it sinful man. Sing it all and over again. Christ receive it sinful man. Make the message clear and plain. Christ receive Satisfied his last demand, sing it all and over again. Christ receive his sinful man, make the message clear and plain. Christ receive his sinful man, Christ receive his sinful man, even me. With all my sin, purge from every spot and stain. Heaven with him I enter in, sing it all and over again. Christ receive his sinful man, make the message clear and plain. Christ receive. Because he died on the cross for our sin. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn, if you will, to Luke chapter 5, and in verse 17 through 26, here we have an awesome story, an awesome event, a healing of a man who is paralyzed, but yet he is healed both spiritually and physically. Now, according to Mark's Gospel and Mark's account of this same happening that took place, Jesus is in Capernaum. In all probability, maybe Peter's house that they are they are doing all of this is happening in, because Peter lived up around Capernaum. And he's in a house, he's teaching the word of God. Now the house that we, we read this, the house is jam-packed with people. Pharisees, teaches the law, his disciples, people from all walks of life were there. And even people from different cities and different places are there. Jerusalem, Judea, Galilee. Do you know how far it is from Galilee to Jerusalem? Anybody want to take a guess? A million miles? How many? A million miles? No, well, it, like it, it probably is a million miles, but it's about 70 or 80 miles from Galilee to, uh, basically, to Jerusalem, or to, to, to where they are right now, in Capernaum of Galilee, in the city around Galilee there, and to Jerusalem. If you want to think about it, probably as far as from here, maybe to either Denham Springs or Baton Rouge, if you want to, if you want to think about that far. Uh, and people walk. Now, they didn't have transportation like we do. So it took them about four days, basically, three to four days, to get from Jerusalem to that. So they got people, even from Jerusalem, they were probably in town already doing some things or whatever. Also understand that this is not a coincidence 
that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are there. They followed Jesus from place to place. Even some of them came as far as from Jerusalem just to hear what Jesus had to say in order that they may take something back and say, look, this man is, is, is proclaiming heresy or trying to find something against Jesus. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the scribes, all of them, they all have rejected Jesus. And so they would go miles and miles just to follow him, just, just to try to find some dirt on him, to try to trick him or do other things. And you, and you can read that throughout the Gospels as to where they would go to great lengths. And, they, and, it wasn't, and, and, and if they would only open their hearts and their ears and their eyes to what Jesus had to say, they would be so blessed and rich, but yet they were close to it all, and everything that Jesus said, they, it never registered to them at all. There was only a few within the religious realm of the Pharisees, the scribes, and teachers of the law that actually paid attention to the words of Jesus and, and probably knew that he indeed was the Messiah, but only a few in retrospect. And so they were there in this house along with everybody else, not so they can get enriched from the Word of God, just so they can see if what he's teaching is in line with what they are teaching in it, heresy. Also, what you've got to understand as well, that right after this, prior to this here, he was already, uh, he already went into the temple and turned over the money changers and, the, and, and ran out all of the, uh, all the things they were selling in there, the, 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 the sheep and all the other animals that they, they, they would offer. He threw all them, he already chased them all out prior to him doing this, so you can understand that what he was, they didn't really like him because of that, because they already upset all the apple carts that they were making money from off of all the people in the temple, God's house. So he's already did that. So here we read what took place here on this occasion in Luke chapter 5 and verse 17 through 26. First of all, notice the context of what we have in verses 17 through 19, and you can get up maybe a better idea in your head concerning this. It says, one day he was teaching Pharisees and teaching the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem. You see, so he came from a far distance. Again, 70, 80 miles with nothing then were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Now some men carrying a paralytic on the mat and, and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. However, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the towels in the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. Now, this is something, isn't it? Here you have four men carrying a, para, a man who is paralyzed. And now these four men, they come up into the house to where Jesus here is teaching. He's teaching the Word of God, and they come upon the house in order to get the man to be healed by Jesus. But they could not get in. They found an obstacle. And the obstacle was that the house was full of people, and no one there was allowing them to get through. They wouldn't make a way for this man to be healed at all. Now, they could have tried another day, another time. They could have brought the man back home and seek Jesus later. But instead, what they did, they carried the man upstairs on the roof. And then they dug a hole in the roof. Now back then it was, there was a flat roof. And the, and the roof there did not consist of tile and, and two by four or tile and plywood like our roofs are. Instead it was mud. It was made up of mud and hard stuff like that. And it was easy if you had something to where you could just dig through it and you could make a hole. But it was dirty enough where if it rained, the rain would fall off. It's almost like we was in California when my, when, when my daughter Mindy used to live in California and where she was at. 
It would rain sometimes. And do you know that rain would not penetrate that mud, that dirt at all? It would just, it would actually just, when it did rain, because it didn't rain very much, and when it did rain, it was just like it would hit the top and just run right off of the ground itself. And there were problems sometimes when it, when it did that. So it's the same thing with the roof. So what the guys did was, these four men, they, they would have carried it, put them on top of the roof, put them down, and then they dug for themselves in order for them to get the man in front of Jesus. In other words, these four men were determined by any means possible to get this man in front of Jesus. They did not allow the crowd or other obstacles nor were these men discouraged because of the fact no one would let them in at first and because of the difficulties of what happens. You know, in this life, you and I, and some of us, we've already known firsthand we're going to have difficulties, we're going to have obstacles, we're going to have disappointments, we're going to have heartaches, we're going to have trials. Different things are going to happen in our lives because sin is in the world. And because of sin, we have obstacles. We have heartaches. We have different things. You know, the Word of God so proclaims in Job chapter 14 and in verse 1. Here the Word of God says, Man is born of woman, is of a few days, and full of trouble. And prior to that reading in Job 14, in Job chapter 5, here the Word of God so declares, Yet more man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. But, however, if it were I, I would appeal to God, and I would lay my cause before him. Now I ask you, are not what these men are doing here? They are bringing this man and they are laying him before God. Lord, here's our cause. This man needs your help. And you're the only one that can help them. What do we see happening with the men? We see faith in action. They're doing something. They're helping out their friend who is in need. Sure, I'm sure they prayed for him. I'm sure they brought it up before God. I'm sure they, brought, they went to the temple and made sacrifices and everything else. But now, they're doing something. Their faith is working. And they did not quit just because of a packed house. They didn't quit. They didn't give up. They kept up. And they found a way to get to Jesus. So notice what took place. And this is an awesome verse here in verse 20. Look at the claim and a, and a declaration here that is made by Jesus when the man is placed in front of Jesus. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Wow. Jesus is in the midst of teaching the Word of God to all of these people in the house. And then, all of a sudden, there's this stuff coming all down, and a man is just laid right before Jesus. He's lowered by those four men. He looks at them, he looks at them, and then he says to the man who is laying there, paralyzed, friend, your sins are forgiven. You see, what did Jesus see? He saw the faith of not just the four men, but also the faith of the one laying there as well. All of them. Faith in action. And without even saying anything, the four friends or even the man laying there, Jesus declared such a significant issue that had to be addressed in the man's life as well as in the lives of those people that are present in there listening to Jesus and his teaching. The man's spiritual need was far greater 
than his physical need, his sins. See, Jesus was also going to show the people, including the Pharisees, teachers of the law, that, that the, even though back then the thought was this, the man's physical condition, because he's a paralyzed, was due to the fact there was some sin that had taken place in his life. So because he was a sinner, he is paralyzed. And they associated that back then with all of the infirmities they had. If you were lame, if you were blind, uh, if something physically took place with you, it was because of some sin that was done in your life that was causing the physical problem. There are people who believe that even today as well. And it may be that may be taking place. Now, Jesus could have just simply healed a man and sent him home with no question. But what do we see happening? Jesus gave the people the word of God and also gave Jesus the opportunity to continue to teach the word of God and also to show God's mercy, God's grace, healing, and forgiveness. Can you imagine? The man is lowered in front of Jesus. And without anybody saying anything, all Jesus says to the man is, Friend, your sins are forgiven. An awesome thing. He says the same thing to you when you come to him with your sin. And you repent of it. And you come before him. And he says, your sins are forgiven. Why? Because he died on the cross for your sins. And here, this is even before Jesus went to Calvary to die on the cross. But he was already going to the cross and he knew this. And so, we see here, as he says this. Now, as he said, after he says this, you can imagine, you probably could not even have heard a pin drop after he's told the man that his sins were forgiven. This probably awestruck a lot of people. So notice the confrontation, or even the showdown, if you want to call it the confrontation, but notice the confrontation, and notice the revelation that Jesus so reveals to the people, especially the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Notice what takes place in verse 21 and following. Now the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves. They didn't say this out loud. He's just thinking. We've all thought things, right? Where nobody has said anything. They were thinking to themselves, who is this man, this fellow, who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked them, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say to this man, get up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Now he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying on, and went home praising God. And everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. Now, when Jesus said this to the man, we see that the religious leaders were thinking to themselves, and they were probably outraged, they were awestruck, thinking to themselves, not out loud, and you know what? They were right. They were absolutely 100% right. Man cannot forgive sins. Once, before I came, became a believer, I was at a, I went to a Lutheran church. I used to go there. And at the end of the service, the Lutheran pastor, he would say, by virtue of my office as an ordained minister word, I forgive your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, it just so happens that particular Sunday, I was going out with this girl. And she turns to me, she says, 
He can't do that. He can't forgive sins. And he's right. The girl is different. She told me that. I don't know. I mean, I was, I was an uneducated unbeliever. I was just going to church. I had no idea. And he, these men here, when Jesus said this, they were right. Man cannot forgive sins. Now, I can forgive somebody who says, listen, I've sinned against you. Forgive me. We can do that. But to say, I forgive you of your sins, I have no power to do that. Only God, and they're right. But what they did not realize is who was standing, who was sitting before them and preaching and teaching was indeed God in the flesh. This was God stood in before them, and they couldn't see this. They were blind. They were blind by their sin. They were blind because of the fact they have rejected Jesus as the one whom God had sent. They have rejected him as the one. And they were right. But again, remember now, how do we know that this man, and how did the people know that this man's sins were forgiven? Because Jesus said so. Simple as that. He said so. Also, the second thing that took place, not only do we know because Jesus said so, but also because he was healed instantly. You see, if they did associate his physical condition with the fact that he was a sinner, and if Jesus forgave all of his sins, and then Jesus healed them, what does that mean? He was forgiven of his sin. That means his sin was gone. So they couldn't dispute this. Don't you see? Again, it reveals the deity of Jesus being who he claimed to be. Not only because he told him his sins were forgiven, and not only because he instantly healed him, but notice it says that he, was, he knew what they were thinking. I don't know of anybody that has that power here. I don't. I don't know if anybody has the power to know what anybody's thinking. I'm, uh, thank God I don't. I really don't want to know. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. Again, we see the revelation given to us that this Jesus is, in fact, God. Because he knows the motives, he knows what we're thinking, and he knows all about us as well concerning him. Also, understand as well, here in Luke, and what we see in the Gospel of Luke, in verse 24, it says, But that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. This is the first recording of Luke, and the first recording we see of Jesus using the title, the Son of Man. And it's found in Luke at least 23 times. Now, the Son of Man is also used at least 80 times in the Old Testament of Ezekiel. And it's also applied in Daniel chapter 7 as it applies to the Messiah. And these people knew this. They knew the Old Testament. So when he said, this, but that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he's relating to them who he is, that he is indeed the Messiah that he is God who came in the flesh, and that he, and no one else, has the right not only to forgive sins, but also to heal this man as well, revealing to them who he is. Amazing, isn't it? That he not only demonstrated his deity, but he also did what? He demonstrated compassion for a needy person, for someone who was in need forgave sins, healed physically, healed spiritually, and he knows what people are thinking. I don't know of any other person that in the past, not Muhammad, not Hare Krishna, none of the people that everybody else prays to had this ability or this power. Why? Because they are not God. This was God who came in the flesh and stood before them and healed this man as well. And notice, when all of this was done, what did the people do? In verse 25 and 26, they praised God because they knew God was working in their midst. God was being revealed to them. You know, but sadly, like back then and like today, not all people 
believed in Jesus Christ or believe that Jesus is the Messiah. There are many who still reject him. And there are many back then as well. Even after reading about the miracles, but these people, they saw with their own eyes the miracles that Jesus performed and the things that he had said and still they didn't believe according to John chapter 12 and in verse 37 it says even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence they still would not believe in him and why? because of what was spoken of by the word of God and the prophet Isaiah the Lord who has believed our message and to whom has the Lord has, been, who, has the arm of the Lord been revealed. For this reason they could not believe because I say it, Isaiah said elsewhere, he has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts so they can neither see that with their eyes nor understand with their hearts nor turn or I would heal them. And the reason is it because of the hardness of their hearts. Because of the sin they have refused to believe that Jesus was the one who came. And we have people like that today. By faith, we, sinners, come to Jesus Christ. We are healed by faith and are <laughs> saved when we come before him and repent of our sin. By faith. The four men and the man who came, what did Jesus say? He said he saw their faith. And he healed him. We come before him and he sees our faith because he knows firsthand. And to all who put faith in Jesus Christ, they will have not only the forgiveness of sins, but they will also be healed and enter in to God's kingdom as well. Jesus is not a God. He is God who came in the flesh. And later, he died on the cross for our sins, my sins, your sins. He died so that we can have eternal life. And to all who come to him, he gives eternal life. And the word of God is plain. It says, all who put faith in Jesus Christ, all who believe in him, will be saved. So to all who put faith in him, can be saved. And the question today is, are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ? Not intellectually, as many of these people who heard him, and saw the miracle. But the question is, do you know him here? Does he live in your heart and your life? Have you repented of your sin and come to know him as your Lord and as your Savior? You can do that today by merely putting faith in Jesus Christ. And then, making it public, let everyone know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. And you can do that now. Let's all stand. Almighty God, if there's anyone whom you have spoken to, anyone, Lord, who you have said, come unto me, I pray this morning, I pray now, they will come. And Lord, that they will repent of their sin and come to you as Lord and Savior of their life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Here as we sing our invitation hymn and closing hymn, hymn number 426, Victory in Jesus. If you have that victory, praise God. If not, come, repent of your sin, and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and know the victory over sin that comes through Jesus Christ.
to all of us. Again, we don't worship a God. We worship the one true God. And his name is Jesus who came in the flesh. And one day we will be with him as well. Let us share that message with everyone. I pray God's word has blessed you and I pray God's word has enriched you this morning that it may have helped you as well. Again, do remember we have some Sunday school material in the back if you'd like to take one home uh, and if no one has taken it, we have, I think, one open window. If you'd like to have one, if there's not one there, let me know. We'll make sure you get an open window of large print for your devotional that you can have. Also, again, if you want to help with the relief to Hurricane Laura, of the people over in southeast Louisiana, Cameron Paris, Lake Charles, and other places. Again, be careful. Just don't give it to anyone, but be careful of what you do and uh, what takes place with that. Again, you can give it here, just right on air, to the relief of Hurricane Laura, and we'll make sure that it gets to the proper people as far as with everything uh, concerning Hurricane Laura relief effort as well. Pray for those people and pray for us and pray for our country as was mentioned as well. Again, Wednesday night, 6.30, ladies, uh, Wednesday night Bible study back in the kitchen and also on Messenger as well. Al, lead us in a closing prayer, please, sir. Heavenly Father, again we come before you, thanking you for all the blessings you bestowed upon us. And Father, I know sometimes Sometimes we feel hurt. But Father, sometimes we feel our prayers aren't answered. But Father, we pray that you know what's best for each and every one of us. You know, Father, and we do. We do as believers want your will to be done in our lives. I thank you for each one that's here. I pray that you will be with each one. Keep us, bring us back to worship again together. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen.